How's everyone doing tonight? All right. Awesome. Uh, I just want to start by, I think you can all join me. Let's give a round of applause to all the folks at TechTO for putting this together. This is dynamite, right? All right. So, got a nice little slide deck for you that's almost showing up. Um, my name's Chris. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. That's a photo of me from two years ago in my favorite place in the world, in Hawaii. Also a time when I had a better appreciation for the importance of a good haircut. I also love skiing. I also like to create, which is probably why I really, really enjoy drumming. And frankly, it's probably why I love coming to work every day, work for this company that I started five years ago. The company is called Unata, and we basically build the grocery shopping experience of the future. We work with a lot of leading uh, American retailers. We've got a killer team over, over here. Say hello, guys. Um, and really, really rapid growth that we're experiencing. We were on Deloitte's uh, Fast 50 list last year. We were under 30 employees. We're going to be over 60 by the end of the year. Times are really, really exciting for us. I'm not going to talk to you about any of that. <laughs> Actually, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of my philosophy that I think has contributed to some of the success we've seen today. So I'm going to talk to you about applying product mentality to everything in your company. And the first thing I want you to recognize is that a successful product has nothing to do with the idea. And I can firmly say this because our idea, what Unato is all about, is exactly the same as what it was in the business plan six years ago. It wasn't the idea that got us here, it's the people. It's all about putting together an incredible team of people, but it's more than that. It's about getting those people to buy into a series of smaller products that gets them engaged in your company and results in fantastic outcome. So I think it's important for you to look at everything within your company like it's its own product. That's everything from your company culture to your investor presentations to the way your office is laid out, which I get in trouble for trying to get involved in that. But it's everything in your company is a product, and it's all, these are all components that will drive your employees to engage in your company and inevitably your success. So I'm going to give you four keys, four of the things that I've learned that I think contribute to great products. Now, great products, one of the problems is that details are important, and great products usually involve hundreds, if not thousands, of details. And that makes things complicated, right? Because at the end of the day, you want to be able to communicate a great product succinctly, get people really excited. You want to deliver it in a simple, simple manner. I mean, if you're giving a project to someone about a, something they need to work on, right? You're giving a task. You're giving a product to an employee. You have to get them excited about what they're building. You need to be able to explain where it's going to be, what all the requirements are, what it's going to look like, everything. You're selling a product. And so that gets complicated because there are a lot of details involved. Luckily, there's a shortcut, OK? I want you to imagine for a second that this is your vision for whatever your product is, OK? It's crazy, it's complicated, it's beautiful, and most likely no one has idea, any idea what the fuck it is, right? It sounds like you guys can, can, can identify with this. But, but that's an important thing to recognize is that there's that disconnect between what you see and, and what you want people to build and getting that into their heads. But we are visual, visual creatures, OK? And the important thing is to harness that. If I was to ask five people in this room to write down what this picture is, you'd all write different things. And I think everyone in this room would write different things. So that's a problem. So what you need to do is realize that and immediately get your idea out of here and onto paper. One of the first things that I learned that was really, really important is that hiring a designer is probably the most important first hire that you can make because you got to get it out of here, and you got to get it down there. And every part of your company is a product. So there's so many different applications, because at the end of the day, you're building a map for how you're going to succeed. And every different piece of your company is a different piece of the puzzle, which requires its own vision. And at the end of the day, you as a founder, it's your job to lead people. It's your job to tell, you, tell people where you're going. And fundamentally, that comes back down to being able to clearly articulate what that is. Now, you get a product out. And as we all know, that's not it. You got to paint the picture, but then you need to observe and you need to iterate. So I'm going to give you a real life example of one of our products, which is not a traditional product, and how we approach that. And that's our company culture. What you're looking at here is actually a list of all the details. We wrote out all the details. And this is actually just about one tenth of what goes into our company culture. And we wrote out all the things that we wanted to happen on a recurring basis, everything from birthday reminders to social events to Friday networking events, all these things that make up the DNA of our company. And 
we came up with process for it. I mean, there was jokes about process not being fun. Process is critical. If you don't have process, the great things about your company will never happen. We, in fact, even hired Stephanie, who's sitting over there. She doesn't know I'm going to call her out. And Stephanie is our manager of company culture. She makes, thing, makes sure that everything that we care about happens consistently. And that allows us to put up a page like this. It says, we have the most kick-ass company culture in all of Toronto. We do really, really cool things, and this attracts great talent to us. And that results in a phenomenal team. The team that we've put together, I'm bragging a little bit, but has far exceeded any expectation that I ever could have imagined. It's a fun place to work. People feel comfortable, open discussion happens, all those great things. And while that was good, we talked about iterating on the product, I think it's absolutely critical that you never rest on your laurels. It's always important to keep improving your product. So when it came to our company culture, we wanted to make things better. And I remember a couple months ago, we talked about how we could do that for our onboarding process. Reason why I'm showing this strange guy, if you don't know who he is, his name is J.J. Abrams. He directed the last Star Wars movie, which I'm sure you saw. And he has this whole philosophy that I like to, to implement called Mystery Box. Mystery Box is about adding that extra little bit of excitement to something that has structure to make it that much more engaging. Okay? Um, so how do we do that? Well, we actually put a real mystery box in place when it comes to our company culture. We have, every time someone joins, there's a box with a bow waiting for them. We could have put all those things on a desk, right? And they could have walked up and taken those things. But we took it one step further. We put it in a box. We put a bow on it. People walk up and they're like, what is it? There's anticipation. There's excitement, right? That creates something unique. It creates a memory, and ultimately, that's going to create conversation. We wanted the best onboarding product. We treated onboarding like a product. And people, obviously, I think the mix to success here is in mixing a little bit of surprise with a little bit of structure. That's how you get great, great success, which leads to internal as well as external word of mouth, which in today's Toronto tech community, it's hard to hire. We're hiring, by the way. Um, so, uh, basically to recap, those are some of the interesting things that I think are important to, to call out. Um, last thing I will say, four keys to success. One, like I said, is visual communication. Two is structure and process. Three is implementing a little bit of mystery box. I missed a slide here. But the fourth is really important, and it's, I'm going to sound really cheesy, is heart. Aw. Oh. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. People can sense when you're passionate about your product. They can feel it. When you put your heart and soul into every single facet of your company, they want to be part of that because passion is contagious and people want to be part of something exciting. So if you're part of a startup, you always read that poster, do what you love, make sure you, you, you put every sort of ounce of your soul into your product and people will love working with you. At least you guys love working with me, right? They're paid to say that. So, um, so anyways, those are my four recaps. Thank you very much for letting me talk, and have a great evening. Oh, the box is there. Sorry. How would you translate a product into a service? I look at them as completely the same. I mean, part of our business, we also have big U.S. clients where we sell a platform, but we also have services that go hand in hand, and we evaluate everything about our services just the same way we do our platform. So, um, you know, Brandon over there has a series of metrics that we measure. We're always optimizing. We're always thinking about ways we can make it better. So it doesn't necessarily always have to have a visual component to it. Um, like I said, with our culture, that's why we, you know, culture, it's hard to sort of come up with an image. Sometimes that's just a list. Any other questions? Oh, that's far. Oh, <laughs> I kind of got it. Hi, thank Hi. you. My name is Andrea. Um, you mentioned that the first hire that a company like yours should be taken in, it's a designer. But you also showed the picture of the creativity and the versatility that there could be in that response when looking at that image. So I wanted to know what factors or what are the designing factors that you take into account when choosing one designer over another based on that yeah. response? Yeah, great question. I, I think it's, it's sort of a little bit more art than science. Uh, you know, it's someone who gets you, right? In, in a lot of ways, the relationship, I think, between a founder and a designer is it's, it's, it's a relationship, and you need to be able to connect. And so I think you got to do a little bit of trial and error 
to figure that out, maybe with a few different individuals. Um, and I think the designer portion is just a little bit more important in the early days, especially because you're trying to show off your vision or product to investors. And the quality of your pitch deck and the quality of how you broadcast your product is more important than writing a single line of code at that point. Oh, there's someone there. Um, how do you manage to uh pay enough attention to all of those little things without micromanagement? That's probably one of the hardest things, and I'm not super good at it just yet. They're all laughing. Um, it's, it's really hard to strike that balance between caring and letting go. And I find that letting go really happens when you find the right people, when you establish trust. Um, you know, We've recently onboarded a lot of people that have allowed me to to let go of that kind of detail. And what's great about that is that they put in a spin that you never would have imagined. And as long as you have that continuous dialogue, you know, you don't necessarily need to nail it. You can always contribute later and you can, like I said, let your employees own the product, which in turn will likely yield a better outcome because they're thinking about that portion of the business every day. If you went over there. Oh. Hey, uh, really nice presentation. Thank um, you. I just had a question, like, I mean, it's very inspirational, like, you, what you gave, like, you just spoke, it really, you know, attracted me. So I'm wondering, like, how did you figure this out for yourself? Like, like, where would you, I mean, you're a pretty young guy, and this is, like, for me, like, I'm about to go in the same process. Sure. So I'm wondering, like, how did you figure out in the first place, like, hey, this is the approach that I should be doing, like? Uh, one thing that stood out, I was actually at a conference, and I completely disagreed with the speaker, and that's how the idea came out. So hopefully some people totally disagreed with me and that sparks something else. Um, but to be honest, I, I, you know, I was 24, 25 when I started the company um, and I had no idea how to get things started, or rather when the idea hit. And it, it sat with me for a year and I tried to give it off to my employer at the time. I didn't know how to do anything. What became clear is one, they saw value but they didn't know how to execute it and my idea was related to the company I worked for. It was in the same industry. Um, and I think the one thing that was most obvious was my mother, actually. And when your mom tells you to go out and pursue a crazy idea and risk your career, that's really a good sign. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.